This is the food factory of the ocean. This is the nursery habitat of the ocean. This is the salt marsh. And if you go into this wonderful environment with all this good rich mud, with all its organics and all the food that it offers for the estuary and all the shrimp that it feeds and the worms and all that sort of thing, well, you have to get in on their own terms sometimes. We're out here in a North Florida salt marsh at low tide, which means it's a little tougher to get around because the North Florida salt marsh is all about a few species of plants that grow in soft sediments. It can be sand, it can be mud here, it's a mixture of both. There are not many places in the world where you have such huge salt marshes so close to settlement where people can go and see it. This area remained undeveloped because in the 1800s, if you came in by sailing ship, the water offshore in the Gulf here was so shallow that you couldn't navigate. If you came down by mule and wagon, you hit swamp after swamp after swamp, and then you hit these broad expanses of marsh that you couldn't travel through. So these marshes were an enormous barrier to human movement. And there's no good soil in those forests up there. It's all limestone and wetland and swamp cabbage. It's not farmable. So before there were highways and supermarkets, you had to live where you could grow your own food. You can't grow food here. So this coast was left to the fishermen and the eagles and the manatees and the sea turtles and the mullet. And as a result, we still have a wilderness coast here today. Depending on where you are in the country, a marsh may be mostly needle rush, it may be mostly cord grass. If you go a little bit further south, marshes like this have black mangroves in them. And if you go further south still, the marshes are replaced with black mangrove and, white, and red mangrove, which replace the marsh in terms of being the plants that live in the intertidal zone where there's not much wave action. Now, you don't find this in a place where there's a lot of wave action on the shore, deep water, big waves. You find sandy beaches. But here, offshore from this marsh, it's shallow, a long ways out. And that means there's not a lot of wave action coming in. When the tide comes in here, it comes in like a sheet flow, and it just gently rises, and then it gently falls. That allows these rooted plants to, to uh, maintain their dominance here. Uh, when you walk out here, this is called a salt flat. And this is at the high end of the marsh. We were down at the coast, at the seaward end of the marsh, and we were out in the middle of the marsh in the creek, but up here, right next to the forest, that, for, that line of trees is like a shoreline in its own right. And that is the edge of the intertidal zone. Where the trees stop, that's where the tidal influence stops. So when the tides come in, there are different heights of tides at different times of the month. Some high tides are higher than others. The highest high tides make it all the way up to the tree line, and they make it up into these areas that are open. And the reason they're open and there's no grass here is because water comes in here on high tide, it doesn't all flush out, it tends to evaporate, particularly during the summertime. So it evaporates, it's a natural salt flat, it leaves behind very high concentrations of salt in the soil. The soil here gets so salty that even the salt marsh cord grass and needle rush marsh can't take it. So you get this barren area, and the plants that are here are called Betus and Salicornia, these are succulents. These little plants have succulent leaves just like desert plants do. In fact, they're related to the same plants that would grow out in the deserts of the southwest. The succulent crunchy tissue is similar to what a cactus has, and it's an adaptation to dealing with the high salt concentration. They're the only ones that can make it up here with the extremely high salt. But these open flat areas are really important. This is where you'll find wood storks and egrets and herons and uh, um, white ibis, and sometimes spoonbills come in up here. Sometimes we see white pelicans. They don't like to sit out there in that thick marsh, so when the birds are coming through, if they need a resting area, they'll use these salt flats. The other nice thing about the salt flat is that the deer come out to these marsh hammocks. You see these tree islands out here. These are spots in the marsh where the underlying limestone is just a tiny bit higher just enough so that it's above the highest high tides, and then you get terrestrial vegetation on it, slash pine 
and palmetto and, and cabbage palm and so forth. And the deer go all throughout here at night and they create little deer trails that go from salt flat to salt flat. They don't want to get stuck in the mud any more than we do. So it's possible, it doesn't look like you could walk through this, but you can walk all through these marshes. You just find the salt flats, you find the deer trails, and off you go. So. Huh? This is pretty out here. Yeah. These are grass shrimp. These don't get any bigger than they are now, but these are a major food resource for the larger fish, the crabs, the all the wading birds that you see out here in a marsh. This is a major food source for them. The grass shrimp live here throughout their life cycle, but the blue crabs come in here and use this as a nursery area. So these are juvenile crabs. These are also there are also killifish in here. These little fish also live in the marsh throughout their life cycle. So this is an adult. There are several more down here. These killifish are also an important food resource for the larger fish in the marsh and the birds that you find. Bird watchers come out here to look at the egrets and the, and the ibis and so forth. The birds are here because there's this unconcentrated source of food here with the fish and the shrimp. If they're on nuclear war, and I somehow survived the initial impact and had to survive. The best way to survive would be to simply have a net like this and be in a salt marsh and you would never starve because the protein out here is just enormous. All the way out this way here. 